Hello everyone and welcome to another editing video. This time we're going to turn this image into this one by only using Lightroom. If you want to follow along, you can find the link to the raw files in the description of the video. And now, without much more talking, let's begin. So here we have the raw image. I have already cropped it a little bit just to straighten the shot. Next up, I do want to head into the basic stuff. At the moment, you can see looking at this program, there is some under and some overexposure going on. So that is the reason for me to choose the Adobe Neutral Profile since this will make the whole image a lot flatter. The underexposure is now fixed according to the histogram. Still, we have a little bit of overexposure, but that shouldn't be a big deal. However, first off, I'd like to adjust the white balance. For that reason, I do want to pick a rather neutral look. So let's just pick up the white balance selector and I'm looking for an area in the image where all three colors, so red, green and blue, are close together. So in this gray spot right there in the center, it looks like a good spot. So let's just pick something like this. Now it's still not perfect, but a lot more neutral. I do, however, want to bring down the temperature a little more. So we're just making this shot a bit colder. Also, I want to raise the tint since at the moment the green color cast is a little too much for my taste. So I want to introduce some more magentas in here. Perfect, that looks much, much better already. Then let's work on exposure. As I said, there is now still a bit of overexposure left. You can see it's up there in the clouds. I don't think that's a big deal since the clouds are not that important to the image. Still, we can try to fix that by just bringing down the highlights. Let's drop them quite a bit. So not only will this fix the overexposed parts, but we also will get some more details in those bright spots on the mountains. Next up, I do want to introduce some more contrast. That means I'm bringing down the shadows. And if I'm going to accidentally introduce some underexposure, that's mostly in those areas which are not vital to the image. So I don't really care for that part. But that is looking very good already. We can further tweak the contrast by bringing up the whites a notch. And I want to also bring down the blacks. So if I click on that slider and hold down the Alt key, you can actually see where the unexposure is kicking in. And as I said, it's in that tiny area right here, which is not important to the image at all. So contrast wise, the image looks much better already but I do want to add some overall contrast, just like that, as well as some clarity and some dehaze, just a tiny bit. And while we are down here, let's also introduce some texture to give this image some more sharpness. And I guess we can also introduce some vibrance right away, just to make this image a little more colorful. And here we have the shot after the base adjustments. Compared to before, the colors look much more natural. The contrast looks better. We did recover a lot of details in the mountains by reducing the highlights. Let's continue with a bit of masking. So with the masking, this shot will change quite a bit. First off, I'd like to change the blue part of the sky up there. So let's just use the color range mask, click in here once. And you can see the selection is pretty good, but I want to refine it a little more. So I'm holding down the shift key and just click in the brighter blue part on the left to select that blue tone as well. So I only want to have the sky selected. That means we need to adjust that mask. So let's hit those three dots. And here I'm going to with intersect mask with select sky. Doing this will only select the blue parts within the sky. So that is perfect for this purpose. What I want to do with this selection is to just bring down the exposure, which will add some more contrast to the shot. I don't want to drop it too much, just a little bit. That should already be enough. Then I do want to work on the foreground for a while. Here, let's use a linear gradient. And I try to cover the whole reflection in the foreground like that. Here, let's pump up the whites, making this part a little brighter. And the most vital part for this mask is the clarity, which I'm going to increase now. 
which in my opinion works always great with those reflections. Also I'd like to introduce some more texture for that extra sharpness. Perfect. The top half of that reflection looks pretty good, but the bottom part is way, way, way too bright. So we want to fix that as well. Let's create another linear gradient and I just want to cover the bottom part like that. And in here, let's just bring down the exposure and I want to make it really, really dark. Maybe like this. At the same time, you might notice this area is a little too warm. I want to fix that as well by bringing down the temperature. Let's bring it down a notch like that. So we just have this nice blue color tone in the water as well. Okay, I do think I want to adjust the sky some more. So I'm going to create another linear gradient just for the top part like that. And here again, let's bring down the exposure. I'm dropping it quite a lot again. And I do think I need to adjust this mask coming further down just like that. All right. Now there's one more mask I want to add and I'm going to use the radial gradient on the left side, just like that to add some highlights in this tiny area. What I'm doing here is to just introduce some exposure, not too much, only a very subtle amount, but that looks much, much better. And that is the image after the masking adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. You can see we now have a pretty much completely different image with way more contrast going on. So next up, let's do some color grading. And there's not that much going on, but I want to start in the HSL panel. First off, let's work on the luminance. I want to brighten up those trees that get hit by the light in the distance. Those are mostly yellow and green and to do that I can simply use the yellow luminance slider, bring it up and thus raise the brightness of those trees. If that's not enough I can also do the same with the green slider and you can see how this will nicely brighten up those trees. Perfect. Now I do think I want to brighten up the blue luminance as well and you can see how this mostly affects the sky. So let's just turn it up a notch. Maybe the masking was a bit too much up there, but I think that's a good spot. When we increase the luminance, this will also have a side effect. You can see we get a little less saturation in those areas. That means I'm going into the saturation tab. Here I do want to bring up the yellow saturation. I also want to bring up the green saturation just to counter those luminance adjustments. And we could maybe even bring up the blue saturation. Perfect. That's it for the HSL stuff. Let's do the split toning in the color grading panel. As always, I'm starting with the highlights. And since we're working with the sunset shot, I am going to use a warm color for the highlights. So let's set the hue to something in the yellow range and bring up the saturation. I only apply a very low amount here because I want to keep it subtle. Now for the midtones, again, I'm going with a warm color tone. And again, use some saturation here. Not too much, just a bit. Perfect. Finally, for the shadows, I'm using a cold color tone and bring up the saturation. All right, that works pretty well together. The final part of the color grading is happening in the calibration tab. Here I just want to bring up the blue primary saturation just to make the image a bit more vibrant. All right, looks very, very good. Then we do have the sharpening left. So as always in the details tab, I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, add some masking. So only the important parts are affected by the sharpening. And then I'm going to increase the amount. I was asked in the comments about the sharpening, if it would look strange on my images at 100% view. So let's zoom in real quick. Now if I deactivate the sharpening, you can see along those edges what's happening. We kind of get some more pixels along those edges, while those plain blue areas for example won't get affected at all due to the sharpening. Of course the higher the amount you choose, the more visible those pixels will get. 
but in the end you can safely go with higher amounts here since even if you print it I don't think you would look at this image from this close of a distance. So here we have the sharpened image and at that point that is it for editing this mountain landscape shot with Lightroom only. Actually there is some leftover tree on the left side so let's try to fix that real quick using the spot removal heel brush and just brush over this part. Okay so usually I would do that in Photoshop because it's much easier and much more precise but since I said I only want to do that in Lightroom I just use the spot healing brush for that. Not perfect but I think it's okay. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.